Hey everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. As always, I am your host, Matt, and as always, if you enjoy videos like this, go ahead and thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, only if you like it. <laughs> only if you like it. Sometimes I do a different sort of more in-depth videos where I'm using some higher quality cameras and some deeper dive discussions. Today in this tutorial, we're going to dive deep into understanding this new update coming out to Beaver Builder. In fact, it's I think it's actually going to be... Uh, presented as a new product, if not a new paid add-on to the existing sort of suite of Beaver Builder software. It's called Beaver Themer. I'm not going to dive into all of the stuff that's associated with it today. I think people in the Beaver Builder Facebook group are doing a fantastic job uh, sort of diving into this alpha version and exploring the different things that they're doing or that they can do with this new software. Um, and mind you, it is alpha. So I'm not going to cover everything because things are probably probably definitely, <laughs> probably definitely going to change um, as the team over there starts to mature this product. But it has sort of unlocked a, a typical scenario that I found myself and my team in before when we're working with clients. And that is Beaver Builder makes it great for you and I and, and, and folks who are in the know to build a, uh, a layout with the Beaver Builder software, but we don't necessarily want to give that to our clients. Not because we're afraid that they're going to know that we use the Page Builder, uh, see another video that I did in my other channel, uh, but we just don't want them going in and messing around with things, even though it's easy and they can might may be able to go and revert you know, to a, a, a change that they made. We just don't want them messing around with that because then they start going uh, you know, way down <laughs> the rabbit hole of redesigning their site. So how do we give them just bits and pieces of a page, of a website that they can edit uh, while we're still using Beaver Builder to, to manage and, and build the layout of the site. But how do we give them these bits and pieces that they can just change the content or images without having to touch Beaver Builder, right? And without having to touch any of the styling around that and just leave all of that stuff up to us. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. Right now, we're gonna use Advanced Custom Fields. This is a pretty big plugin, so I am not going to cover it at, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. You're going to see me set these custom fields up. Um, if you have questions, maybe I'll cover it in a different video. But the idea here is we're going to create these three sort of typical fields that you might see on a product page or a landing page. Uh, and the idea is we'll give our customers access to only those three fields to change the content uh, of, and we'll be the ones designing the rest of it with Beaver Builder. Let's go. Going to add the new field group. Uh, this is I'm just going to call this product because nothing else comes to mind right now. Field label is going to be headline. That's just going to be the headline. Again, I'm going to leave all this stuff uh, as is. So a headline, and it's going to be a text field. I'm going to add another field. I'm going to call this one summary. I'll leave that as well. Summary, and this will be a text area. Uh, because there'll be a little bit more text involved in this area, so I imagine. I'm going to add one more last field, fix my mouse pad. Uh, one more field here. This is going to be the image. Uh, it's going to be field name image, and the field type will be an image. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that, those three fields. The next thing I'm going to do is attach cu the, this custom fields group to a page, um, and that'll be the home page in this example. So you can play around with advanced custom fields. There's a, a ton of things that you can do. And again, maybe I'll try to cover it in another video. So that's it. Those three fields attached to the home page and publish. Headline, summary, image. You have to remember these field type names because that's how you're going to build these templates later on. Uh, in fact, right now, we're going to go into the Beaver Builder templates. I'm going to add a new template. And this is all familiar. We've seen templates before in Beaver Builder. So I'm going to just call this product again. Uh, I'll call it homepage. Homepage. Uh, the type will be a template and add save template. I could actually even do this in a, in a row, but let's just keep it at this. Keep it at this simplicity level for this video because there's a lot here. All right. So here's my template. Nothing new. We've all seen templates before inside of Beaver Builder. Uh, what I'm going to do is give myself two columns. I'm going to sort of set the stage where on the left-hand side of the page, it'll be the headline and then the summary of text and then the image on the right-hand side. Your typical sort of uh, hero area-ish product sort of uh, row, that kind of thing. Going to go ahead and put in the heading. Um, and let's just show you what it normally looks like. This is the stuff that we're already used to doing. So uh, with Beaver Builder, we put in our headers and we say, this is our uh, great call to action. Oops, exclamation point. We hit save. We can customize the look and feel of that. We can make it a little bit bigger. But one of the things that always sort of happens is 
you know, the customer wants to go in and change that. There's a new sale. There's a new product launch. Uh, they just want to try a new marketing message. So they always come back to us and they say, hey, how do we, how can we change that? Sure, we could do it as the consultant. Maybe there's a contract in place. You get in support, that kind of thing. Um, but if we ever tried to say, hey, why don't you go do it yourself? Diving into the builder with sort of all of these um, drag and drop areas and all of the customization stuff that they can do, padding margin, uh, mobile, desktop, all that stuff, that might melt some people's brains. So what we want to do is say, how about I just give you these three boxes and you can just play with that. Let's see how we do that with advanced custom fields. I'm going to edit this one more time. You'll see in this alpha version of Beaver Builder, if you click on the right-hand side, there's this little um, plus and close. Uh, I forget what the official name of that icon is, but this will expand this area. Now, there's a lot here. There's a lot in this new update, but I'm only going to cover the advanced custom fields right now. And uh, actually, first, what I want to do is get rid of this. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to advanced custom fields. I'm going to insert that. That's going to bring up... Uh, the field type and the field name. Now we called header before, right? I believe. So we called it the header. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And you'll see some kind of magical short code stuff happening there. I'm just going to hit save again. It's going to disappear. I'm going to add in another text editor or I'm going to put in a text editor before it was a headline. And this time I'm going to do the same thing. Instead of putting anything in that edit box, I'm going to go to advanced custom fields, insert, text area, and I believe I called this one summary. I'm going to save that, save that. And last but not least, I am going to add in a photo. And I believe we call this our image. And you can see that there's an advanced custom fields here. Uh, field name is image and field type is an image. And we can select from this. I'm just going to go full size for lack of a better thought process. Now, we've built our template. It's sort of a ghost template though, because we can't see um, any of these custom fields that we've, that we've put in. I mean, visually, um, when we're looking at this stuff. So you, at this point, I don't, I don't know if we're going to really um, focus in on how to manage this just yet. Maybe they'll have some kind of like hover effect that you know that some advanced custom fields are loaded here. But you sort of just have to remember that these custom templates that you're building, um, you know, I'm hovering over this just so you can kind of see it in the video. Uh, this resembles you know, these blocks of data that are there, but visually you can't see it. So, I mean, that's just a little nitpicky thing that I'm, I'm thinking of now. If you built a really complex uh, template for, for the solution that we're talking about today, uh, you could kind of be scratching your head if you come back to it a couple months later and you're like, oh boy, where, where did I put that custom field? How do I know which custom fields are here without clicking into every single one, right? And hovering over all of the little blind spots that are there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, maybe this isn't the best way to do this, but this is how I found uh, in this alpha version on how to do that. I'm going to hit done. I'm going to hit publish changes. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. <clears throat> I'm going to go to my pages, all pages. I'm going to go to my homepage. Now, again, if you've never seen, of course, there's there's text here because I was playing around with it before. Uh, if you've never seen uh, Advanced Custom Fields before, it's attached it to uh, the bottom of our, you know, whatever page you've assigned it to. I've, in this, fa in this uh, case, I've assigned it to the homepage. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in this, this content. You can see I've already put it in here. So the headline, the summary, and the image. So it's just text. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to paste it right back in. So I'm going to go call to action area. I'm going to highlight this, copy this, paste it back in. And then right here, I'm going to select an image. I'm going to get rid of that and then add another image. I'm going to do the same one, select the image, and I'm going to hit update. Now that data is saved in the, in these custom fields. I'm going to launch the page builder. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete everything here. Actually, it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to do oh, templates, homepage, it's going to drop in that template that we just built. So you can see that uh, this was wrong because I must have got the wrong uh, field name. So let's actually take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and hit done, publish changes, back to the dashboard. Let me just see what this custom field was called. It was called headline. So let me go back to the builder, the templates. I'm going to edit that template. And this is the one right here. Headline, not header. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit done. Publish changes. Back to the dashboard. Back to the home page. <laughs> uh, I'm going to edit this. Launch the page builder. I could have done it from the quick menu if I wanted to. Templates. Boom. Edit. 
replace existing layout. That'll pull in that call to action area there. Now, beautiful. Publish the changes. This template is only going to show up um, on whichever homepage uh, you've put it on, right? So, I mean, it's going to show up on any page you put it on and specifically the homepage in this example. So if you were to make, uh, if you were to put this template on multiple pages, then those custom fields on that homepage would actually also control that unless you made specific field groups for specific pages. And you could do that, uh, certainly. So let's take a look at now sort of how do we not let our customer, or what does our customer see um, if we lock this stuff down uh, by role? One of the things I've already done is set this user here, uh, this user Tom McFarland, to the editor role. Uh, and you'll see right here, I switched him to the editor role. And I'm using this other plugin called user switching. So I can hit, click on switch to. And now I'm actually loaded as Tom McFarlane. You can see that right up here. And you can see all of my admin stuff is gone. So I've already set Beaver Builder to only show up on admins and access to Beaver Builder to only show up on admins. Same thing with advanced custom fields. That's not going to show up um, on the editor role either. It's just going to be on the admin. Let's go to the pages, all pages. Uh, home page. Hopefully I can edit that. Yeah, take it over. So now my customer can log in and edit the content here. So I can just say uh, customers new headline. We don't, whoops, we don't want this much text. And let's just change the image. I don't know. First one, select image. Going to go ahead and hit update. And now I will preview the changes. And there's the new content, as you can see right here up on the screen. They never touch Beaver Builder, but they still have access to modify this content, which is pretty darn powerful. Powerful. I know there, there are some solutions out there already, some combinations of other plugins that people have used before, um, and maybe even some custom coding and some custom templating, but kind of powerful with some of the stuff that they're coming out with uh, over at Beaver Builder. And let's see, just so you can see it launch page builder, um, you know, they don't have access to it. They can edit this, right? They can see this stuff, uh, but they're not going to be able to um, add any more or bring in any of this other stuff. And actually, this is kind of interesting too. I would hope that maybe they, again, this is the alpha version. It would be great if even that uh, role didn't have access to this stuff, right? They couldn't come in and, you know, even modify any of this stuff. So interesting that that's, uh, that, that still has access to it. But you could also maybe even lock out uh, the page builder from even loading on this page so that they don't even see that. Uh, and that would be even um, a way that they wouldn't even be able to access it, that kind of thing. But the idea is you would tell your customer, come in here, edit these custom fields, and that will affect the front end without having to go into the Beaver Builder page builder. You can uh, check out the stuff that they have going on. It's pretty, pretty darn powerful. Um, some of the stuff I think is really going to push them into a different territory. Look at my hair. <laughs> um, it's it's going to push a, push them into a different territory where, uh, you know, it's 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 definitely something that's going to be much more for the the technically oriented person, right? Building these templates and understanding custom fields, and a lot of the sort of theming options, which I didn't even look at, can get kind of uh, you can get in over your head, and if you really don't understand WordPress. While this is giving you the sort of visuals of how to approach it from a developer's perspective, you still kind of have to know what you're kind of what you're kind of doing. Uh, I'm kind of interested to see where that goes in the Beaver Builder community. But so many of you are very passionate about this stuff, um, and you guys all sort of love this and gals. So I love to hear some comments. I love to see how you plan on using these new updates coming in from Beaver Builder. It's plugintot.com. Again, if you enjoy videos like this, thumbs up. If you really enjoyed it, uh, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you there. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. See you in the next video.